when IndyCar and Kart were having their little split that, let's be honest, did both series more harm than good in the long run, Kart was in money trouble due to several factors. One of those being that all the big boys had gone back home to Indiana because the sponsors were getting annoyed that they weren't racing at Indianapolis. But when Kart was still holding on to every last cent that it had, it did have an attempt at running a couple of races in Europe. One of those was at the Lausitz Ring in Germany that was not only the first race after 9-11, but also the race that Alex Zanardi decided he was going to stick a big Italian middle finger up to the Grim Reaper, and also held races at Rockingham near Corby in England. When the Rockingham races became unprofitable, they went to Brands Hatch instead. And with IndyCar now considering expansions into Argentina and Mexico, what if America's premier open wheel series made the hop across the pond back to Europe? What circuits would they visit? And would those circuits suit those particular types of cars? The circuits that IndyCar currently runs at are a couple of ovals, some street circuits and old school racetracks that tend to be flowing and undulating. Places like Mid-Ohio and Barber that are tricky to overtake at. Tracks where, in cars that are effectively all the same except for minor bits and pieces, you have to get your elbows out to get by. See Scott McLaughlin and Roman Grosjean at the last IndyCar race. But when it comes to racing in Europe, we have an absolute boatload of tracks that would suit these sorts of cars. Tracks that, in more cases than not, don't host Formula 1 races. Because IndyCar isn't subject to the same rules as Formula 1. You don't need any of this Grade 1 stuff. So for this, I've picked three tracks across Europe that could fit the bill. Tracks that should be able to give some decent racing and have that similar sort of vibe to them that would fit the current IndyCar calendar. So, time to hunt through the tracks of Europe and see what pops up. First on the list is Brands Hatch. Might as well start with a circuit that has hosted these sorts of cars before. And while the Indy circuit might match up in terms of the names, the Grand Prix circuit is going to be the host of this theoretical race. A rolling start for the Indy cars will work better than the traditional standing start used in Europe because the grid is cambered in such a way it's difficult for the guy on pole to get a good launch, especially if it's raining. And corners such as Paddock Hill, Surtees and Dingle Dell will be pretty epic in this particular type of car, and with a lap time of under 90 seconds it might provide a decent afternoon out. Now it should be noted that Kart used the Indy circuit where Adrian Fernandez set the lap record of 38 seconds. Its location is also pretty decent, just off the M20 in Kent and within easy reach of the two major London airports in Heathrow and Gatwick. But what would it look like? Let's have a look.
Next on the list is Hireth. This track is still one of those difficult to overtake at types of circuits and while it doesn't have the same sort of elevation changes as Brands, it's a track that fits in with that short-ish road course that you often find in IndyCar. Road America and Indy excluded, obviously. And with a recent Spanish champion it might work commercially but while it's close to the city of Jerez itself, the nearest major airports are in Seville and Malaga which are quite a distance away. It also might feel a bit too modern if you get me because it toasted Formula 1 testing and an actual Formula 1 Grand Prix in the past but yeah it might just be a tad too modern with the tarmac runoff and stuff. But with that said, what would an IndyCar look like going around here? And the final track I've got in this little video is Zandvoort, the only circuit of the three that is a current F1 Grand Prix circuit. Now this circuit is tricky to overtake at, it's flowing and now has the new banked corners so multiple lines can be taken. This track also has the really cool section over the back, the long right hander down the hill towards the next two right that get tighter, all contained within Sector 2. With it being not too far from Amsterdam, Schiphol Airport and also within easy reach of The Hague, Rotterdam and Utrecht, it is easily accessible and with the facilities there it should provide decent racing with these types of cars. So here's an example of a car going around I guess.
IndyCar making a return to Europe could be commercially viable and help boost the profile of the spores over this side of the Atlantic. IndyCar is often seen as being inferior to Formula One and a place where F1 rejects go to end their careers. But if IndyCar plays its cards right and promotes it properly, something it seems incapable of doing even in its own homeland, the payoff could be pretty good. And maybe it could generate a new fan base over here. But I don't know. I'd like to know what you think. And maybe some other circuits that could host an IndyCar race in Europe. Norris Ring, Monaco, Donington, places like that. Leave any ideas and opinions in the designated discussion zone under this video and have a chat about it. And while scrolling down, make sure you like this video if it's given you food for thought and subscribe with the bell on so you never miss out on anything I do around here. Massive thanks as ever to the kind folk at Patreon for the support and if you want to help keep things running around here then there's a link in the description along with links to Discord, socials, F1 store affiliate and other general information. Or the super thanks if you just want to do a one-off tip. So until next time, I've been Aidan Maud, have a great day wherever you are, and goodbye.